if marriages are made in heaven, my guardian angel has sure been loafing on the job. <laughs> Get your breakfast. You can do your 500 laps afterwards. Hello there, naughty boy. Oh, hi, Bill. Help me get out of here. I'm stuck. Oh, that's easy, boy. Let's try it. Uh, mm -hmm. Good morning, baby. I come right up just as soon as I got your call. Why, you're the fastest answering man at mealtime I ever did know. Oh, that wasn't it, baby. The eye they're gazing in your shining face gives me a lift up. Oh, well, that's right, pretty, Bill. <laughs> Have some bacon and eggs? No, I couldn't eat a thing. Just had donuts and coffee at Slippery Joe's Diner. You feel all right? Sure, never felt better. Right on the ball. Well, that's fine. Because yeah. Mr. Harry's got some work for you to do. Uh oh. I know there was a catch to it. You talked to me too sweet over the phone. It ain't nothing but fixing up some furniture in the backyard for the barbecue he's going to have Saturday night. Well, with that face, me, I guess I could inhale a few eggs and a little bacon. <laughs> That's more like it. Yeah. You know the old saying, man can't work on donuts alone. <laughs> Not a bit. Get a pound of the steering wheel. We'll finish her up after I eat. How about the right kind of wheels? That's easy. We'll go down the junkyard and get some. Mr. Browder's bound to have something we can use. We can't win a race with junk. The fire street needs ball bearing wheels. Bill's here to clean the barbecue, Mr. Harry. Good. Oh, tell him to touch up the furniture and string some wires for lanterns. Tell him, Bill, one thing at a time is the best method, Mr. Harry. Too much stuff confuses him. Oh, Bueller, can't Donnie ever get here on time for breakfast? I got him in, Mr. Harry. He's washing up now. <laughs> oh, by the way, Bert Perrin is bringing his niece to the party, and I thought I'd ask Marge and Pete. I sure wish I had one of those new portable barbecues. They're wonderful. No dirt, no trouble. That old brick thing of ours smokes like a four-alarm fire. You'll have one someday, dear. I'll have arthritis someday, but I don't like sitting around waiting for it. Well, it's about time, young man. You should see the fire street now, Dad. She's a real bonfire. Sounds like a world beater, but you'd still better eat your breakfast, Barney Oldfield. Barney who? Barney Oldfield. He was the greatest race driver of all time. Bet he didn't have the problem Perry and I've got. What's that, dear? Wheels. Well, Oldfield needed things, too, but he always came up with what he wanted. How? He improvised. He used imagination and ingenuity. Barney Oldfield had an unbreakable faith that he'd win. And when he did, he always paid off his obligations. Hadn't you better get started for the office, dear? You know you have a 9 o'clock appointment. Oh, yes, I should. Do I bring my briefcase in here? No, I'll look in the den. Ingenuity instead of money. What? What Barney Oldfield did, I can do. Can I, dear? You bet you can, son. Just get in there and win. After breakfast. Okay. Not in there. It must be upstairs. Oh. Oh, that's for me. Tell him I've already left for the office. Okay. Hello? Oh, yes. Good morning, Mr. Potter. The barbecue has arrived? Wonderful. Does it have that revolving motor spit and, and the grill that lowers and raises? Fine. No, no. Don't deliver it until Saturday. You understand it's a surprise. Thank you very much. I'll be down to see you later. Goodbye. What's a surprise? Ooh. Now, let's don't be nosy. Uh, the surprise will be if you make your 9 o'clock appointment. Hmm? Oh. Don't work too hard at the office, dear. It'd be pretty hard to keep you in mink coats with that advice. Boy, if we had those wheels, we'd really be in shape. That is, if they were red instead of green. Maybe they have a red one inside. What good is that going to do us? I wonder what Barney Oldfield would have done in a case like this. What are you talking about? Imagination and ingenuity. How's that going to get us the baby buggy? Let me put it to you this way. If Mom was here and she wanted to get the baby buggy, how would she get it? I don't know. How would she? She'd charge it. Come on! It ain't possible. But 
Sure do. I ran out of fish and tied a bill and... Beulah! You and Bill ain't really gonna get married. In the event we were, this ain't part of the trousseau, Oreo. And what did you buy it for? I didn't. Miss Alice bought it. Now, what does she want with a baby carriage? You suppose she's expecting? Well, it looks that way. Oh, I'm so excited. I got goose pebbles all over. Ooh. Well, forget it and help me take this trash to the incinerator. Oh, this is the most thrilling thing that happened to me since Gregory taught me rumble lessons. Well, it ain't happened to you, Oriole. It happened to Miss Allen. Yeah, but it arouses some in me, Dula. I guess it must be my mother instinct. <laughs> Pieces, Oreo. People have been having babies for years. Yeah, but it's so close to me, I almost feel I'm responsible. Bill? Huh? It's gone. How can it be gone when it ain't arrived yet? The baby carriage. I left it sitting right here. Maybe it's only wishful thinking on the part of you girls. Miss Alice must have come and taken it. Why, of course, you. I'd just like to see her face when she finds out that Finds she... out about what? That she's gonna have a baby, silly. Oriole, is there anything you know something about? Well, let me see now. Must be something. Oh, baby, I'm gonna build Miss Alice the finest lid in town. I bet you Miss Alice hid that baby carriage to keep Mr. Harry from seeing it. Why? The papa's got to know about it sometime, ain't he? Yeah, but sometimes they try to keep it a secret as long as possible. Women are funny that way. Yeah, women are funny, all right. Bill. Huh? You got to promise me you won't tell Mr. Harry Donnie and no one else. Okay, baby, I won't say nothing to nobody. And we'll let on like we don't know nothing about it. That's right. We'll let on and we'll say nothing to nobody about it at all. But what about Miss Public Address System of 1952? Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be as dumb as an oyster. Oh, you're that already, but just keep your big mouth shut. Well, I promise that I'll cross my heart. Oh, yo. Huh? Your heart's on the other side. You're crossing your liver. Oh! <laughs> we'll be back with Beulah in just a minute. Is that you, Harry? Well, who were you expecting? I'll be through here in just a minute. What in the world are you doing? Cutting out a dress. Well, can't you buy dresses? Not this one, I can't. Besides, it's fun to make it. No. Oh, you could at least take the pins out of your mouth before you kissed me. Don't be grumpy, darling. Did you have a rough day at the office? No, well, it's not that. Just that when a man comes home, he expects to find a clean house, not a garment loft. Oh, I'll have it all cleaned up in a jiffy. Mr. Harry, hmm? would you please look at the faucet in the kitchen? There's something wrong with it. My wife is a dressmaker, and I'm a plumber. Which faucet is it? It ain't the faucet, Mr. Harry. It's Miss Alice. Miss Alice? What's she got to do with it? Well, she's got a secret, but I think you ought to know. You mean the whole plumbing system's gone out? That dress she's cutting out. Didn't you hear what she said? Yeah, I suppose so. What was it? Well, she said you couldn't get a model like that in town. Well, I got that. Well, it's a maternity dress, Mr. Harry. Who in blazes is she making that for? She's making it for herself. What? The man came here from Potter's this morning with a baby carriage. She hid it so you wouldn't know nothing about it. Beulah, are you sure? Yes, sir. I unpacked it. Well, th this is wonderful. <laughs> it sure is. Well, that must be the surprise she was talking about this morning on the phone. She must have called Dr. Garrett. I heard her tell him that she'd see him in a little while. Oh, you got to treat her very tenderly now, Mr. Harris. Yes, I have. Oh, just think of it, Beulah. Donnie's gonna have a little brother, or maybe a little sister. And you've got to give her everything she wants and treat her mighty sweet. 
Oh, I remember when we were expecting Donnie. She always wanted strawberries. Do you remember, Beulah? I sure do. I'm going downtown and get her some, right now. There ain't no strawberries in the grocery store at this time of the year, Mr. Harry. Well, then I'll send to Chicago. If the mother of my child wants strawberries, she's going to have strawberries. Oh, never mind picking up those things, darling. Beulah can do it later on. You sit over here and rest until dinner. I don't want to rest until dinner. And besides, you said you wanted it picked up. Well, I've changed my mind. Uh, I like it this way. You can cut cloth all over the house if you want to. Harry, did you have a drink out in the kitchen? No, but I could use one. I've got to run downtown, darling. Something important that I forgot. But don't wait dinner for me. Harry, what's the matter with you? What did you forget? Straw... I mean an appointment. I forgot all about it. And remember, darling, I love you more than... more than anything else in the world. Hanging up the linens, hanging up the linens for the old barbecue. Uh, anything else you want me to hang up, Miss Harry? A little boy with Donnie's smile or a girl with blonde curls. Huh? Oh, hello, Bill. How's it coming? Well, if you expect me to use these lanterns from the last barbecue, they got holes by them, except those three that won't work. Well, I'll get some with the strawberries. <laughs> you can't light strawberries, Mr. Harris. You gotta have candles. Bill, can you keep a secret? Well, I've already got one. You don't want to add another to it. Bill, I'm gonna have a baby. You too? Donnie's gonna have a little playmate. I should have known it'd be a leak with Oriel. Oriel? What's Oriel got to do with it? It was supposed to be a surprise, Mr. Harry. How did you find out? Well, Beulah told me. How did you find out? From the same information booth. I've got a surprise plan for Miss Alice. You want to know what I'm going to do? What's that, Mr. Harry? I'm going to redecorate the guest room, make it into a nursery. Oh, that'd be fine. Little animals all over the wallpaper. Kids like that. We can do it while Miss Alice is in the hospital. Say, they got some wallpaper down in Crims with pink elephants on it. That sounds wonderful. Oh, let me congratulate Mr. Harry. Many happy returns of the day. Thanks, Bill. Here, have a cigar. Mmm, thanks. 25 cents. Sometime soon, I hope to be congratulating you and Beulah. <laughs> I don't order no wallpaper for us just yet, Mr. Harry. <laughs> Uh, oh, there you are. So you finally got back. Yes, darling. Knitting little things, I see. Little this and that. I'm knitting a sweater for Donnie. He tore his falling out of a tree. Oh? Where have you been till 9.30? Well, my errand in town took a little longer than I thought it would. Where is Donnie? Oh, he packed off to bed early. Tomorrow's the day of the big race, you know. Did you have any dinner? Yes, I had a bite at the hotel. Are you quite comfortable, darling? Quite comfortable. Oh, don't get up. Don't exert yourself. Well, it would hardly be exerting myself to get a ball of yarn from the chair. Oh, well, I'll get it for you. Thank Here. you. Oh, let me put this behind your back. I don't want it behind my back. It, it pushes me forward. No, no, we mustn't sit with no back support. There, that'll brace you. Now, doesn't that feel better? No. I wish you'd read or something and stop fussing over me. Oh, you're worth fussing over. Here. Put your footsies up. You weren't this solicitous when I was having Donnie. Oh, well, as a man grows older, he understands what a woman goes through. Well, don't you think it's a little late to do anything about that now? It's never too late. Harry, what were you doing in town until 9.30? Oh, as you know, I'm sort of celebrating. Well, I hardly think the small party we're giving tomorrow is worth celebrating. Well, I wasn't celebrating the party. I was celebrating what goes with it. Harry, you found out. I think that's mean and underhanded. <laughs> Look here, Miss Alice, what Mr. Harry got you. Strawberries. Strawberries? At this time of the year? Yes, um. Harry, you're out of your mind. They must have cost a fortune. Oh, what's money? If you can surprise me, I can surprise you. Oh, yes, I did have a little surprise for Mr. Harry Bueller, but... He found out about it. Yes, and you sort of surprised us, too. I suppose Mr. Potter told you about it. Mr. Potter? How does he know? Well, after all, darling, I could hardly have done it without his knowledge. I got to go see about Donnie. Darling, are you sure you're feeling all right? I mean, if you don't feel up to the party tomorrow, I can call it off. Call it off? Well, what for? 
for? Well, you know how it is. I mean, I don't know all the details, but when are you expecting it? Oh, well, don't worry about that, darling. It will be delivered on time. I want you to know, darling, that I'm the happiest man in the world. Oh, you're sweet, dear. But really, what I'm giving you is hardly worth all this attention. Oh, I think so. In fact, I was going to keep it a secret, but I might as well tell you. I'm having the guest room redecorated for you. Oh, Harry, that's wonderful. I'll call Mr. Kramer in the morning and get some ideas. I've already got an idea. How would you like pink elephants on the wallpaper? Pink elephants? What for? Oh, I think it'd be cute. Oh, be fine. At least when your Uncle Ben comes to visit, pink elephants should make him feel right at home. <clears throat> Miss Alice, Donnie wants you to come upstairs and say good night. Oh, no, no. Don't you go. I'll go. I don't want you running up and downstairs. Bill, can you come here a minute? Yes, ma'am. So you were the one who found out about the surprise? Yes, sir. And you told Mr. Harry about it? Yes, sir. Well, he was so jittery and nervous, I thought it would cheer him up. He got to know it sometime. Yes, I guess so. But I did want to save it as a surprise for the barbecue party. Well, he might faint out there before all them people. Faint? Oh, he's been waiting for this so long, Miss Alice. And I'm just as happy as he is. You know, it's just one more thing for you to take care of. And I'm going to love that, Miss Alice. They said he's a new polish for its legs. We can rub the rest down with steel wool. That must be a new technique. Can you imagine? Harry wants to keep it up in the guest room. He's got some silly idea about papering the walls with pink elephants. <laughs> that sounds real cute to me. Well, it doesn't to me. We'll keep it in the garage and we can bring it out when he wants to play with it. <laughs> so many presents for a barbecue before. Well, maybe they're from people who wasn't invited, so they'll get invited next time. You don't suppose the news got about that Miss Alice was expecting, do you? Oh, of course not, baby. You know I've been as tight as a clam. Now, by the way, you didn't know me your big trap, did you? When I have a secret to keep Bill Jackson, I keep it. Oh, yes, baby, I know that. You've been tight-lipped, all right, except when you run over a little. Oh, go on. There's more presents for Miss Alice. I don't get it. You sure this ain't your anniversary, Mr. Harry? Oh, of course not. You don't think I'd forget my anniversary, do you? That's, uh, um, January 16th. Well, that's Donnie's birthday, Mr. Harry. Oh, that's right. Well, let's see. We were married on, uh, February 12th. That's Mr. Lincoln's birthday. Oh. <clears throat> well, anyway, I know this isn't our anniversary. Well... Why don't we open up one of these packages and take a peek at the card inside? Well, I suppose we could do that. One of the little ones, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well, that ain't big enough to hold anything with an oyster cracker. We'll open it. It looks like the easiest one to wrap up again. Yes, sir. What are you three conspiring about? Hello, dear. You look lovely. Well, thank you. Oh, and the yard looks lovely, too. Beulah, you and Bill did a nice job. Thank you, Miss Alice. Uh, just a few lanterns strung around. Oh, Beulah, you'd better get the hors d'oeuvres. You know, Mr. Perrin and his niece, they're always early. <laughs> and, of course, the Bradleys are always late. <laughs> the hors d'oeuvres are nice box. I'll get them, Miss Alice. Come on, Bill. Okay, baby. Harry. Yeah? Did you buy favors? No, they're all for you. For me? What for? Well, don't you think you deserve them? Well... <gasps> oh, there they are. Oh. Hi, Alice. Hello, Hi. Hey, we early? No, not at all. You're right on time. Hello, Julie. Hello, Mrs. Henderson. This isn't much, but it'll be useful. Oh, I think it's all so exciting. Well, a barbecue isn't exactly exciting or an occasion for gifts, but I'm sure this one is. You bet your life. These will come in handy. Set to Chicago for them. Best cotton house in the country. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, do you know what this is all about? Well... Well, I might as well open no, it. No, no, no. Put it with the others. Nothing gets open till I make my speech. I've been rehearsing him all afternoon. Well, all I can say is this is all very mysterious. You're right there. One of the mysteries of life, eh, Harry? 
Hi, everybody. Hi. You don't mind if we come in the back way, do you? Hello, Martin. Hi. Hi. Oh, Julie, hey, you look terrific. Congratulations, Alice. It couldn't happen to a nicer girl. I wish somebody would tell me what this is all about. Oh, we'll let you in on the secret as soon as Bert makes his speech. Well, I better see about the punch. Excuse me. Sure. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Harris. <laughs> Miss Alice, there's a man at the front door from Paula's. He says he wants to see you personally. Thank heavens. Excuse me, everybody. Hey, shouldn't she be taking things a little easy? <laughs> of course not, stupid. Women don't pamper themselves anymore when they're having babies. <laughs> Do you all know about the baby? Well, of course. Everybody knows. Oh, Mr. Harry, you promised me you weren't going to tell nobody. Oh, but I didn't. How did all of you find out about it? Well, I think Oriole told me. Oh, yeah, Oriole, my housekeeper, told Julie. She told our cook, too. And Miss Alice wanted to keep it a big surprise. That's why we wanted to surprise her first. Give Oreo one drop of information and you got a cloud burst. Hey, what's it going to be, Harry? A girl or another boy? <laughs> mm, chances are it'll be one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> when is Alice expecting it? I really don't know. Mm -hmm. Alice, are you all right? I'll go see. Harry, it's arrived. It's arrived. <laughs> Here. Eat this, keep up your strength. Here it is, dear, just what you wanted. There. But that's a barbecue. Where's the baby? Baby? What baby? Well, aren't you gonna have one? Not that I know of. You've let us down again, Henderson. <laughs> Everything is so funny. Well, what's so funny? Then that was the reason for the strawberries and all the attention. Oh, Harry, whatever gave you that idea? Well, maybe you better ask Beulah. Well, it's all on account of the baby carriage you bought and hid, Miss Alice. Baby carriage? I didn't buy any baby carriage. Well, that was no convertible that they left in my kitchen. We weren't dead by three lights. Boy, nothing could have touched that old fire streak today. Man, Mom, you should have seen us. We really burned up the road. It's a good thing you taught us about Bonnie O'Field, Dad, or we would have never gotten these baby carriage wheels. Baby carriage wheels? I'm beginning to see the light. Baby carriage wheels, where'd you get them? I charged my potters. You charged something at potters without asking me? Sure. You said that was the way Bonnie O'Field made the grade. Ingenuity, imagination, and courage. One day I'll learn not to be so literal. <laughs> I think it's wonderful you won, dear. So do I, Mom. And I'm going to pay off my debts, just like Bonnie O'Field did. Here's $10 prize money, Dad, and you can take the rest out of my allowance. Okay, Bonnie. But maybe you better keep the $10. A winning race driver deserves a couple of sodas to celebrate his victory. Oh, boy! Wait till I tell Terry! Now, what do we do with the baby presents? I'm sorry I disappointed you, darling. Disappointed me? I think it's a wonderful barbecue. No, I mean about the new arrival. Oh, don't you worry about that. Of course not, Alice. Keep the presents. Every girl's entitled to another chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, the folks ain't gonna have a baby after all. Too bad. And I was really in the mood. So was I. I made it swim in my own hands. Wooden pig so the little fellow wouldn't scratch himself. Well, just put it away, Bill. Someday it may come in handy. You mean, uh... <laughs> oh, just a minute, passing pigeon. Let's don't dump the apple cart before the horse is loose. <laughs> Bill, put this crib out of sight before old sees it and spreads it all over town that you're the second Papa Dion. <laughs>